Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to write a, uh, a more complex program beyond just a simple hello world. Um, I'll go over some concepts such as local and global variables as well, well as uh, system-wide variables. And um, we'll actually produce a, um, a program that um, can actually be used um, in a calculus class. So I'd like to implement Newton's method. Let's quickly review. This is pulled from Wikipedia. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on the formula, but it basically is um, a local linearization of a function at a particular point. So the formula here is basically the formula of a line where the slope is the derivative um, at a point. Um, so we're basically iterating this formula. Uh, I'd like to think of xn as my old x values and xn plus 1 as my new x values. Um, this is a way of reducing the number of variables that we have to keep track of. So this is the formula that we essentially will implement. Now, before uh, we actually jump straight into programming, I do want to discuss um, variables and how they're handled on the HP Prime. Uh, I've opened up the HP Connectivity Kit, and the reason for that is because it enables me to see pretty much all of the built-in global variables. So for example, the HP Prime has some built-in real-valued variables. They're basically A through Z in capital um, form and theta. We also have some built-in complex variables, so Z0 through Z9, as well as built-in lists, L1 through L0. Let's close that one out. Let's close these out. We also have built-in matrices, M0 through M9. Um, and even application library um, values. Oh, well, so within function, for example, if we double-click that, we have certain variables such as extremum, the intersection, the root, signed area, and so on. Built-in function variables, F1 through F0. If we go to, say, advanced graphing, we have some more built-in uh, expression variables. So these are open sentences, V1 through V0. So the idea here is that there are lots of built-in variables that we could use. Um, so we don't actually have to uh, create new variables and possibly um, expend memory. Now, that's the system-wide variables. And again, the easiest way to fi figure out what they all are is to open up the connectivity kit. Um, either connect your calculator to your PC and you know view it there, or you can just open up the emulator and it, it does the same thing. OK. Beyond the system-wide variables, we have also just regular global variables. These are the variables that you create for your program. And even when the program completes its execution, they still stick around in case you ever want to use them later on. Um, and then there's also the notion of a local variable, which is a variable that will only um, stay within the scope of the program itself. Okay, And I'll discuss those in more detail as we go along. So here I've got my HP Prime. I'm going to switch over to the large view so that you can easily see the programming. Um, I'm not going to use an external editor. I'd like to just program directly onto the calculator here. And this is a short enough example that we don't really need to use an external editor. So let's go ahead and create a new program. We'll call it Newt, short for Newton. Hit OK. And here we are. If, for example, we were to create a global variable. So for example, answer. We want answer as our global variable. Then we would type in export answer, like so. So that once the program newt is um, executed, it will create a global variable called answer that will stick around until we actually delete it. Okay. Um, we, I don't want to actually create any global variables just yet in this particular example. Now. Um, in future videos, I actually want to take this program that we're going to create and then modify it so that it eventually becomes a full-blown application um, that the user can interact with. But for now, let's just think of a pr this particular program as a solution to a particular problem. So there's nothing here yet. Let me go ahead and explain what I'd like to do with this program. I'm going to exit out of here and show you the symbolic view. This is within the function app. So the symbolic view en enables our users to enter in our function. And what I would like to do is to take that function in f1 of x and use that um, as 
the function for which we want to find the root. Okay, so that's f1, and I will use f sub zero of x to store in essentially the formula for um, getting new x values with a Newton's method. All right, so let's go back into our program. Now, all the variables that I want to use, they're going to be the local variables because I don't want them to stick around when we're done. So to declare a local variable, we simply use local. I'm going to need a variable for the old x value, a new x value, um, something for the tolerance, I'll call that error, and then an n value that basically will be a limit on the number of iterations we allow. Because uh, if you're familiar with Newton's method, um, there are occasions where uh, in the search of a root, you end up um, falling into an orbit among the x values. So if you happen to have an unstable so, uh, solution, then um, this um, Newton's method uh, algorithm will never terminate. Okay, so let's go ahead and set our error. And again, this is think of this as just a solution to a particular problem, because in the future, what we'll do is we'll actually make error, the, the error or the tolerance, a user selectable um, value. We'll start n sub 0. That's just our counter uh, for our iterations. And then um, x nu will actually be our initial guess. So we'll just initially guess that 2 is a root to our equation x squared minus 5. You can insert comments by using a two forward slashes. That's just the division sign. And um, I'm going to define x old as x new minus 2 times the error. And we'll see why in just a bit. And um, why I particularly chose to use this, partic the, this formula as opposed to just using an error that will force what I want to happen uh, in the immediate future. So um, what we want to do then is create a function, a function, an actual formula. So capital F0 will store our formula for um, getting those new x values. Now, normally what we would simply do is type something like x old minus f1 of x old divided by f1 prime of x old and hope that that gets it done, right? Um, but that is not going to work because f0 is supposed to be an algebraic type of object. So that requires something like this, x minus f1 of x divided by f1 of x prime, except that's not going to work either because now we've got prime as our um, derivative operator and it's also um, the ending quote. Now we could use something like, for example, diff of f1 of x comma x, except it turns out this doesn't work either because when uh, the compiler or the program editor exit, it compiles this and f1 I'm sorry, f sub 0 actually replaces the x values with whatever the current value is stored in our global variable x. So we have to use yet another technique, and this is the way to do it. I use this command called expression, which takes a string and converts it into an expression. Um, so I still have that algebraic object delimiter, the, the single quote, x minus f1 of x, divided by, and then open parenthesis for my denominator, and what I want to insert there is the derivative of f1 of x with respect to x. Okay, And then I need to end my string with the closing parenthesis and the closing single quote. And then I need to close off the expression command there. And we've typed quite a bit now. Let's go ahead and just check and see if everything's kosher. OK, so everything checks out. This is our formula for getting the new x value. Now, we'd like to store our x values in some sort of list. So let's initialize the built-in list variable L1 to an empty list. And now we insert our actual algorithm for our Newton's method. So we're basically going to iterate uh, the execution of obtaining new x values um, as long as we are outside of the error range and as long as we have not exceeded the number of iterations, which I'm going to actually hard code into this particular example. So while the absolute value of the difference between the new x value and the old one is greater than the amount of error that we will allow, and 
At the same time, the number of iterations is less than 100. So I'm hard coding 100 as the maximum number of iterations to uh, consider. All right, so we're going to increment n to 1 because we want to store the first element in a list. And uh, so we refer to the first element by L1 of n. At this point, when we first run this loop, the value of n will be 1. And of course, um, this little index value needs to start at 1. So we can't start at 0. So what will be stored there will be our current x value, which is our really our x new. Okay. And in this loop, x new then becomes x old. And we get the new x new value by evaluating f, f0 of x old. So if you think about what f, f0 of x is, it's basically it's x minus f of x divided by the derivative of f of x. And the x here takes on the value of x old. Okay, so that's really it in this program. Now, this once we uh, we actually get um, the right uh, tolerance, um, we still have one final x new value that we have to save. So this is where we do something like this and save the net the the very last x new value. Okay. Um, and let's check and see if everything works. So everything's OK. All right, at this point, the best thing to do is just run it and see what you get. So here we go. Oh, before I do this, let's check. Yeah, we do have a formula for f of uh, f1 of x. And our initial guess, remember, was 2. So let's go back to our catalog. Let's hit Run. And what we get is a list. Okay. Now, maybe this list is super long. In this case, it's not. Fortunately, because we saved it in a global variable L1, if we go to the home screen and sh do shift list, L1 is listed here. And we can actually see our x values. So it's n nicely laid out in this list. And we can easily compare um, two consecutive x values to see if we're within our tolerance. Okay. So that's Newton's method there. And that's pretty much it for this particular program. Um, there's still a lot more I'd like to do. This is very rudimentary. And, and as you already noticed, we hard coded quite a bit in here. So it would be nice if we could actually create a program that's a little more versatile. Um, we will still want our users to enter in their equation here. But it would be nice if we could actually pass some uh, values to the, the function newt. So rather than just hitting run and getting this list, um, what I'd like to do is be able to pass some values into this function, or uh, to this program, I should say, and, uh, and basically enable the user to sort of choose their own tolerance, choose the, the maximum number of iterations that they'll allow, and also choose their initial guess without actually having to go into the source code itself and changing it. Um, and then eventually, um, what we will then do is turn this program into an actual app where uh, ideally what they do is they hit sim, enter in their formula, and maybe they hit um, num to actually see a table of all of the um, x values as, um, as the program iterates. Um, maybe even design something like where when this user hits plot, it will show this function here, and it will show the tangent lines at those various x values that we we get from iterating Newton, Newton's method. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it for an example of a program. So um, if you uh, don't mind waiting a, a couple of days, I'll put on uh, I'll put up another video where we uh, expand upon this particular uh, program and talk about. Um, global variables a little more in-depth, as well as how to pass inputs into functions. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next video.